Disclaimer, the following video is for entertainment purposes only. Let's go. His whole life has kind of been the pursuit of spiting and distancing himself from his family. I'll take it. I oh, damn. That's starting off <laughs> strong. Love it. He doesn't want to marry you necessarily. How do you know? Don't act like, oh, you have some special connection with Moses. Like, I know more than you do about everything. Sometimes I worry about Moses. He doesn't even like cats. He's literally the best, most patient person in the whole world. Didn't Trisha have cats and she had to get rid of them? Wait, now I remember why I didn't like Moses. Wait, didn't she have cats that he made her get rid of? Wait, not that she cared about those. She might not have cared about those cats. Ooh, I'm already, I'm hooked. He's oh like God. weird as fuck when you first meet him. Moses has done a terrible job of explaining his relationship as he always does. So. I don't think you guys are close as you think. Because you know people yeah. are like, he's using Trish for money. I get why he's distancing himself from everybody. <laughs> Moses doesn't like you and you guys don't like him. But, but it's true. And then you're denying it, but she's saying it's true. And she yeah. keeps saying it and saying and saying it. And then you're always saying, oh, she's just saying it for the show. It's like, well, that's fucking not true. Did you I, know this motherfucker could buy a nine carat diamond ring? He's your fucking family. Like, we should talk about it. I it's don't have a more problem with Moses. Problem. Who is this person? Like, I don't even know who this person is. Who are you? You guys, how's the volume? Oh, Moses had the cats. Moses had the cats and she made him get rid of them? <gasps> That's even worse. Who are these people? I'm dumb. Oh, Mantis. Welcome to the Trisha Paytas bubble. What is happening? Is this the Trisha video? Is this the Trisha Moses video? What is this? What is this video? She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Exodus 2.10. What? I personally believe that you either love everyone or hate everyone. There's no middle ground. I know it sounds too simple and it's hard to agree with too, I understand that. But when you truly see humanity for what it is, that we're all the same spirit in different bodies, that if I was born in your body, in your shoes, living your experiences, I would be you. I would do the actions you do. I would say the things you say. And there might be horrible actions, and there might be horrible words. But I am that person too. Every person you meet is another version of yourself. Every person you meet is another version of yourself. Yo, 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 my philosophy majors, sh sh shout out in the chat, bro. So obviously we talk about this all the time, like I am you and you are me and we're all each other. But I mean it in like a metaphysical way. Not in a literal way, like I literally couldn't be you and you literally couldn't be me, but also like all of us were born the way we were born, but also like relax Moses, like, but also I get it. Okay. Pretty much since I remember myself, I was always drawing. So I was always drawing, doodling in class, you know, like when teachers would talk, I would have to draw if I wanted to be able to listen to them or to, you know. Autistic. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just sorry. I think everyone's autistic. It's not, I don't believe that. I'm being hyperbolic. ADHD. I'm just kidding. No, so it started very early on and then 
but people like it wasn't encouraged though you know teachers were like you're not paying attention so I always was drawing and then in um, I think around high school I started taking some sculpture like classes so sculpting was the next thing I did and then in high school I studied photography so that that came from there just the visual you know we used to VHS make videos fun stuff like that and um, and then in the in Israel, you do high school and then you go to the military. So you're like 18, mandatory. You don't have a choice. And you're very young. You're 18. You just got out of high school. So, Ooh, so keep in mind, right? He is in that Israel bubble. It's a very different expectation of behavior, all of that. Also, correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Trisha think he has autism, right? Which is like kind of interesting. I don't know if that's true, but... Interesting bubble to grow up in, huh? You don't know much. I think if I was older, I would probably not join, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's something that you can have a just, choice before you know it, you're in it. And once you're in it, it's hard to get out of it. And mm. then you just count the days until it's over, basically. And then when that was done, I kind of, you know, you kind of have to decide what you want to do with your life. So I figured that I, I want to go with what I know doing best and what comes easiest to me. And that's artwork. Mm. I went to study architecture because I figured it's still creative. It, it relates to making sculptures, but it's a bit more functional. So 21, I got out of the military. Then I worked to, I saved money to go to college because I did everything on my own. I paid for everything since I was a teenager. I've been working full time. So I worked. Um, mm. I went to college for a year. Hmm. Then I didn't like that. So I quit and I worked for another year to save money. I mean, I saved money since I was a teenager and the money I saved, I used to move to America. So all that money went to move here. I went to a private college. This is such an interesting like storyline because you have to remember he's Hila's brother. So Hila has this whole own experience in her life as well. And she's having like a different experience where she is younger. So maybe not, maybe she's in the military next. And then Ethan and her eventually meet because they, he goes to Israel for the birthright stuff. Interesting. Hmm. Here. So, and I paid for it myself. So I had money to pay for the first year. And then, um, the way I thought about it was if I'll do well enough, I'll get scholarships. If I'm not good enough, I'm just going to go back home. So luckily, I managed to get scholarships and continue studying here because I had no financial support whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And especially as an international student, you don't get any support because I had no financial support whatsoever. Because I had no financial support whatsoever. Because I had no financial support whatsoever. Yo, these, <laughs> these visuals. <laughs> oh, Hila. Bro, these lyrics, bro. Discord says, I feel like they're intentionally making him look silly. They're obviously painting this in a very particular light. So just everybody keep that in mind. Right? The music, the way it's editing. They have a direction they're sending us. First of all, we're joined today by Trisha Paytas, who... uh, we are happy to welcome back. And the reason that Trisha is joining us today is we thought Trisha Paytas. Now that's the next season of The Bachelorette. Let's go. 
That has to be. This could be really awful. So <laughs> Trisha's here to basically introduce. No, it will not. It will be incredible. I'm gonna ruin like all these people's lives. Such as one what guy, like multiple guys. <laughs> How do you? How would you ruin a, someone? Some guy's life. I don't know. Uh, what's your dream occupation? For them? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think you'd have to be like a billionaire CEO or no occupation. Or just a <laughs> fucking deadbeat. Yeah, like unemployed. So why don't you want someone who's just gonna be a t totally dependent on you? So anyone who's thinking about applying, quit your job. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We have a. We're gonna have a lot of applicants. <laughs> You're saying, tiny. Di oh my God, Mantis says this is so interesting to watch. Uh, to watch knowing nothing about these people. I love that for you. I wish I could watch the Trisha stuff without ever knowing about it because like we've, some of us have been watching the Trisha Ethan stuff since before they even knew each other. Like this is so interesting. Dick, <laughs> any size, no job. This is going to be great. I, I do like a guy that's like super rich too. I, I don't want in between is what I'm saying. I don't like mediocre or anything. Okay, okay, there you go. One have extreme it. or the other. So you have to be extraordinary shitty human being, <laughs> no prospects, or uh, hard work. He's like a, he should make time though, right? He should make he time. make time. He looks so hot. I was like low. Well, okay. Etha, Ela, and Ethan. Etha? Ooh, Etha. Oh, is that their couple name? Etha? Etha made it happen. Like, they, I, okay. They. Bro. He impressed. I was like, holy shit. Let, we'll make, he. Like, he's he, like, like, holy shit. Let, we'll make, he. Like, he's he, like strikingly hot. Okay, we'll make sure he gets in. We'll take a last minute. Is he from Israel? Mm-hmm. But he lives here. In LA. Super successful. Long hair. I love it. Uh, <laughs> if not, we can just also hook up. We don't have to date. Oh, my God. <laughs> <brother's talking> <laughs> Woo! That'd be fun. I don't... Oh my Let's God. not have him as a contestant. Let's just meet. No, no, no. He's got to come through the show. No, why? Because then it's like a I'm same... DM him. It doesn't matter. Oh, gosh. He's going to tell us. <laughs> you can't... You guys can't get past us. <laughs> If we fuck, he's gonna tell you. I don't think so. Yeah, he will. Ooh, I love that. No, I really. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, so we have six strong contestants, possibly seventh with Ela's brother. <laughs> We're gonna get a last minute. How many of them do you think knew in this moment that like that was the guy Trisha would marry, that she would have two kids with, and that they would all never speak after some point of this? Like, wow, there's so much. Like, isn't it interesting? This is the one thing about being a content creator. Or being uh, a person who's documented their lives is you could go back and think like, oh, my gosh, like this, this, like I had no idea. Like I even think about my husband, how like, you know, you walk into, you know, your everyday life, not thinking about it. And you never think like, oh, like you talk to that person for the first time or you see them and you don't even know like that's my whole life or that's going to be the next stage of my life. You know what I mean? Not your whole life, but you know what I mean? And you don't even think about it. So like at this stage, they're talking about a man who's about to have like two children with this woman and they don't even know. But it's almost like looking back, you're like, did they know or was it manifested or what is this? Like they have no idea anything that's – none of us did, I guess, to be fair. But yeah, that's how I look at my whole life. Like, oh my God. Like I, I walked into – work one day and then oh like I never I heard someone's voice for the first time not even thinking like oh like I'm gonna marry this person like you don't even know oh my gosh does no. your brother think I'm hot though Have, he like was down well he I don't talk to him about but he knew <laughs> it was no he wanted hot. yeah he wanted to apply he wanted to apply though he did tell us he was going to like in a serious way yes wow why haven't you looked at them why did we have to do all this why didn't you just be like oh like Eli's brother want to see you I'd be like yes he doesn't want to marry you. Oh my god! How do you know? Oh, because he's Jewish. Well, I don't know. No. All right, come on. Well, come on. I Let's don't move. Know. I really don't know. So, I know that he said that he was going to apply. Actually. We're gonna. Kay says it wasn't gonna naturally happen, occur without her action. Trisha literally made it happen. Well, obviously, like in life, the so there's the misunderstanding of manifestation, which is like if I think about it, I'll get it. There's the reality of like you think about it, you bring about it. That's kind of in the middle. But the think about it, bring about it is the action. Just thinking about it sets off into motion the action. And that's the thing. Once you think about it, it sets into motion the possibility for the action. It's like you walk every day, see faces every day, meet people every day. 
that are just other like energy blobs. And then one day they become like a person you recognize. And then the next day they become a person with a name. And then after a while, they become like a whole possibility of a journey for your life to deviate. Because we're all in our own like, you know, we're all living our own lives to relax and chillax and max and all, you know, just acting all cool, you know, chilling. We're doing our own things. And then eventually the people that are doing their everyday things, not thinking about it, they like change direction and end up like building a life with you. So something about Trisha doing this did set into motion a real reality, right? Like absolutely. And it set into motion like a hope she had, which she brought up, which became into fruition, which is what you do, right? Like that's what you do in online networking. You do that in life. You're like, hey, I really want to work with this person. I'd love to work with this person. And then people start to think like, yeah, this person really wants to work with them. They should meet. I'm really hoping for this. Like every time, you know, you say a person's name and that person sees that, per like that name, that name. I've had that happen with content creators where someone will be like, oh, Brittany, you should talk to this person. And I'm like, okay, but like it doesn't mean anything. And then I see them again and I'm like, oh, that even happened. Um you know, in like making friendships or, oh, I had a friend, I, I dated a person who I only ended up dating, this is years ago, because one of our mutual friends were like, can you show them around town? I just ended up showing this person around town, not thinking about it. They ended up dating them for like years. You just never know like what person's going to come into your life and what they're going to mean or do for you. And then sometimes people come into your life and they become Mrs. Trisha Paytas. Damn. Or in this case, I guess, Mr. But you know, I was making a joke. That's all I know. That's all I know. Damn. He is older. older. He's over years old. 40, right? He's 40. Shut up. <laughs> Literally my type, and he looks so good. Like I. Look he definitely good. doesn't look 42. Holy fucking shit. We'll make sure we get his application. <laughs> in, okay? Now I am drenched, so you might smell oh, it. Oh, stop. <laughs> Are you really? But why? You, we just were talking about I, it. I was but your leg. Your leg oh my god! And first of all, it's crossed. I have a giant. No, but on. I don't know. I don't want to. There's nothing. There's, there's so much. It smells like sardines in here. No, it's so fucked. Talk to me, baby. Yeah. All right. So, all right. All right. Well, we. Oh well, yeah. This is excited. We'll get. We'll get Moses in here too. Moses. Now, that's oh. his name. Yeah. Fuck that name. That's crazy. Okay. Fucking Moses. Holy shit. Bro, that is kind of bold. Naming your kid Moses, bro. Abraham. Naming your kid like one of the big dogs, bro. That's kind of big, bro. They named him Moses. Moses, bro. That's a crazy name to name your kid, bro. You're like, you're going to part the Red Sea and Trisha Paytas' legs one day, my bro. And he looks like Jesus. Hey. Wait, lockdown? March of 2020? This happened during lockdown? Why does it feel like Trisha and Mo Moses happened like 17 years ago? But of course it must have happened during lockdown. What? I really have to vent. You guys have been following The Bachelor. Oh. There Trisha Paytas was our next bachelorette. And then we have your brother who uh, was going to be the bachelor before Trisha Paytas. And then we have your brother who uh, was going to be the bachelor before Trisha Paytas. Mm -hmm. And and I told him the same thing. I said, if you're going to be involved, no shenanigans, no wild card, no DM, no bullshit. You mm -hmm. have to tell us everything. And he swore. <gasps> No, like with Jeff Wittick. Jeff Wittick is doing The Bachelorette right now. He hasn't fucked it up yet, have I? I have, I'm behind on the Jeff Wittick Bachelorette. He didn't mess it up, did he? Did Jeff Wittick mess it up? He better not have DM'd any of those girls because I am hooked on Jeff Wittick going through the dating process. If I find out that Jeff Wittick ruined The Bachelorette like Trisha did, that's true. Trisha did. Moses and Trisha, they ended up lying. Okay, well, I don't want to. Okay, well. He said it's all about the show. It's all about making the show better. Mm-hmm. He said it's all about the show. It's all about making the show better. Mm -hmm. And so last time Trisha goes at the end, you know, I was really hoping that Moses, Elo's brother, was going to apply. Okay. Okay. And we said, yeah. Um, we thought he was too. Because he mentioned to us. He man. wanted to do it as a goof. That's what I thought, if I'm being honest, just to spice up the shit. Right. He but. wanted to apply, though. He did tell us he was going to. Like in a serious way? Yes. Yo, Jeff Wittig episode uh, is episode two is on Wednesday. Okay, thank you for that, Matthew, because I'm stoked. Wow. Why did I have to be Oh, Perila. Remember? Okay, just a reminder, please. 
that Hila and Ethan have like a pretty fucking good relationship. It's pretty fucking healthy. They communicate. They're in love. They have kids. They're really good to each other. I'm very team Hila and Ethan. I just feel like they have a really good relationship. Keep in mind when Trisha came into their life in defense of Hila's hesitation for her to marry her brother, Trisha was at a pretty bad stage in her life. Remember that she ran a car into Jason's house? Just a reminder that she was dating Jason. Just a reminder that she was like fucking around with so many people, drugs, breakdowns, her borderline was a mess like Trisha was not a great person and I don't think anyone would have wanted her to date her brother or their brother like I'm pretty sure any of us would have been like don't date Trisha Paytas what are you doing so Ela being like very hesitant to let Trisha see or date Moses I think was in re reason for so many people because again what kind of a person was attracted to Trisha I think it is a red flag if you're attracted to Trisha when she's fucked up I make, that's why I thought he might have been a narcissist because like why are you going for a woman who's so fucking in need of therapy, who's so in fucking need of care, who's so in fucking need of stability? Like just a reminder that Trisha at that time was was really coming out of her most toxic era and in her defense, in her defense, she did recover extremely well but over the span of COVID and, and blocked down. Um, and I think mostly due to the way that she connected with Moses and Ethan and Ela because they became a huge support system for her, you know? But now they've been talking in the DMs apparently because Trisha... Oh, wait. Amber says that was a lie. Apparently no one can corroborate. Even Jeff said the house story was BS. <gasps> Did Trisha not run a car into Jason's house? I don't want to spread that if it's not true, girl. I always thought it was true, but if it's not true, it's not true. Never mind. Trisha, not as bad as we remember. If no one can get, like, if no one can confirm that story. Oh, wait, did she say it, though? God damn it, Trisha. I thought Trisha told that story. See, Trisha lies so much, I can't, it's, oh, fuck, I can't even keep it together. I'm trying to defend this woman, but I can't keep it together. Maybe her and Moses belong together. I don't know. And the last. They seem happy, so. Episode was like, I really thought he was going to apply. I like him. I found it. We can take a same DM him. It doesn't matter. Your brother, Nothing. first of all. I have to I have to tell you that I don't know what he's up to. Right. And I I'm don't not, know this anything. This isn't some inside joke. Like no. look at the way he's looking at the, so this is what Trisha posted. Okay, I so we're having discourse over whether or not the meth story is correct. The problem is is like Trisha told the story, but Trisha lies so much. I don't know what's real with her. And that's the problem is like she doesn't can, she's not consistent with any of her stories. Livy says apparently the vlog squad would lie to her during her blackouts. Oh, that's the thing, too, is like I don't trust anybody in that vlog squad. Like I trust plenty of people, but I, I tr anyone who took David Dobrik's side, I don't trust. And I don't trust anyone who defended Dom, obviously. But obviously, at the same time, like I don't know anything that really happened because I wasn't there. And I don't even know if she really ever did crack. That's the problem is like. Okay, you know when you tell a story to your friends, but you make it sound more like a big deal than it is? Like, oh, you know how we've all done DMT and acid and shrooms and like weed? You know how we've all done the fun drugs, like the hallucinogenics to like meditate drugs? Okay, if somebody retold that story and they wanted to make it sound saucy, they'd be like, do you know I made drugs in my house? Oh my God, you did not. Yeah, I literally made drugs in my house. Like drugs. They'd be like, oh my God. They'd be like, yeah, dude, I did so many drugs. Bro, you made DMT. Relax, bro. You like shot off to go hang out with unicorns. Everybody relax. Like, you know, it's like you could make the story sound more intense than it is. Or like, even if you did meth, like I know people who have done meth and it is not that exciting of a story. But if you want it to be one for YouTube, if you want, you know what I mean? I don't know if Trisha tells stories in order to make it sound like very, like, oh, I got kidnapped a lot. But like, all you did was fall asleep at parties and people like drove you around. Like, I'm not sure if it's like the big truth or if it's like, because any story can be like that. Any story can be like the biggest, like, oh my God. And then any story could just be like, yeah, dude, it just depends on how you tell the story and what the real story is. And so that's why I never know with Trisha. Does she like, you know, I never know if her stories are just like YouTube sensationalized or what? Because like you can do hard drugs and not have an interesting story. You can do interesting things. And so like even with me, people are like, oh, you should sensationalize your life from your 20s. 
but I just like feel weird doing it because it wasn't weird having threesomes and it wasn't weird being a part of a nudist group and it wasn't weird being in BDSM and it wasn't weird being gay and it wasn't weird doing drugs and I just you're making it sound like it was weird but it was just my life and it was normal and it was cool and thoughtful and considerate and yeah there was drama but like it was just my life so like I don't know I, I guess is she sensationalizing it or was it truly like the dysfunctional kind of like oh my god because for me it just felt so normal doing my life but I wasn't sure. Like, I'm not sure if she's just, you know what I mean? Look at his face. What is he doing? It's, it's like he's, he's like he's uh, goofing on us. Because he mentioned to us. He man. wanted to do it as a goof. That's what I thought, if I'm being honest, just to spice up the shit. Right. I thought so, too. Bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? Let's see what happens. I might be married to Trisha by then. If you Vegas marry her before me, I'll be devastated. I'll just give her a baby and collect her child support. Okay, so it's like a joke. Oh, my God. People are always bringing up this text message to me like, oh, my God, she's saying she, he's always saying, like, I'll get her pregnant and marry her for child support. You autists. Like, is this literally the text message? This is obviously a joke. Who is this to? Who is this? Is this a girl? If you marry her before me, I'll be devastated. Is this another girl he's talking to? This is obviously like it might be drama humor, but it's not serious, right? And by the way, I go, well, obviously, I immediately go to Moses and I'm like, dude. Is their audio too loud, guys, or no? Is it is it okay? What's, what the F is this? And he's so cryptic. Now, all of a sudden, he's not telling me what's up. Yeah. He's being super cryptic. I'm most disappointed in your brother. I don't know what labels to put on things. Two weeks in quarantine, getting to know each other didn't work out. What would you call that? Whoa, it was two weeks less. That's. They know how to make something out of nothing. Are you a pickup artist? I just watched her video and that was a lot I can relate to. Confusion? Latricia, whatever. you. Uh... This is the girl he was messing with? Okay, wait. So he's being, is he being a petty bitch? Is he being like sass, like sassy? Is he gay? Is he being like sass? Is he queer? Is he being like sassy? Or is he being like a conniving asshole who's like double teaming Trish? Like I know he like possibly cheated on Trisha. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, we, she, you know, we serve at her pleasure. I mean, you don't know which ver which personality is showing up on which day. I'm just happy when she comes in. Trisha, she's not, she's not conniving. She just wants to fuck Moses. So is Moses playing Trisha and us? Mm -hmm. In some weird... I, probably. What's, what's he trying to get at? Probably. I will sabotage his relationship. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> because you both fucked us. I don't give a shit right now. By the way, Moses, if you go back to the first photo where Moses is grinning into I, the camera, he's the one holding the photo. phone. He's the one holding the phone. He is. She looks so happy. Trisha looks so happy. Moses? Mm. Trisha looks so happy. No makeup, just living her life. complicit in all of this he can't ever say this ran away from him because he took this photo mm -hmm. and you know he said he was just going to get involved as a goof who ruined it was it trisha or moses i personally blame moses i think it's a group effort i think moses is putting her up to it too i think they think it's funny April 3rd, 2020. Girl. I know a plot when I see one girl. I've gotten half of my boyfriends this way. I'm just kidding. No, but seriously. Girl. I get it. She into him. She making her move. She's putting them in a close, close, confined area together. I get it. They're eating things, swallowing things together. I get it. Yeah, like just being like endless, endless. I'm like, I think it's the same people. Like the same like three people. I feel that make like new accounts. <laughs> Wait, Ethan. I'm sure the love of your life, Moses, is thrilled to hear of your inter intentions to fuck my dad. Do you really think you need help? And help any help fucking up relationships, bitch? You were here trying. To have a thruple with us two weeks ago. Okay. What's wrong with that? Okay. What's wrong with that? All of that's valid. She was single at the time, bruh. I don't think it's that many people here. Hmm. 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 
Patricia and Moses, Elo's brother and Trisha Paytas, the saga continues. Oh, Who's yeah. That? Your brother, I have to say, he's so unforthcoming with us that it's it's irking me. It really mm. is irking me. Because he always goes, he goes, oh, it was just, you know, it was the quarantine and my place got broken into and I didn't have anyone to stay with. And I was like, okay. But I know your, but I know your brother's not like that. Your brother's like self-sufficient. He can, he's, he's not like, oh, I need to, can I stay with you? My place got broken into. Right. You know, he, and then he goes, it's over. Oh yeah, we've been just chilling. Just had a long call with my sis and brother-in-law. Oh no, what did they say? It was about work. I'm gonna do a renovation on their home, so we talked about that. And I told them the whole tea thing is over. And I'm not. It's not even that I'm upset that they're together. I just want him to tell me. What's happened? Wait, 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 wait. Even that I'm ups. Uh, whole tea, tea thing is over and about the pod. It was a good call. Oh, that's cool. What did they say about it? That that they're together. I just want him to tell me what's happening. Mm -hmm. So then he, it, I think he thinks that like I don't want him to be with her or something, and that's not. I just want him to tell me the mm -hmm. truth. Um, and then he told us that it was over, and then she still posted a picture with him. Here. Why do you have to post pics on Twitter? Just keep it private. Here. Why do you have to post pictures on Twitter? Just keep it private. Private. Here she is with Moses. Oh. Yeah. This is from March 31st. Theodore's aunt is the top comment. <laughs> we talk to Eli's brother like all the time. He's over at our house like every weekend. Yeah, I, I, I knew Except that. Except now so, because of the quarantine, yeah. he's not. So. so that's his new family. <laughs> well... Yo. He's a narcissist. <laughs> what? I don't know if that literally, but like. Uh, something like not narcissist necessarily like NPD, obviously, like we're not therapists, therapists here, but there is like a when people are lacking for like when they're not forthcoming, when they're hiding, when there's like that kind of thing like my brain is like what are you doing like i have a sibling if they acted this way I'm like what the fuck are you doing like what are you hiding bro because like you know your siblings bro you know when they're hiding shit and like my little brother's behind shit my brother's behind shit so i'm like what are you doing bro what are you hiding what is it what the fuck is it the dilemma is like i don't know if they have that kind of family dynamic or they'd be like what the fuck are you doing but then of course like they're adults they don't have to tell you like they're perfectly like able to like not engage right but it is one of those things where, you know, you know when your family's fucking bullshitting you, bro. So it's interesting. Ari says, I'm confused. Why do they care so much that they're spending time together? Interesting question. Okay, this is interesting for an observation. Okay, do you know this story or are you completely like you must, are you, com I'm assuming you're completely like out of the loop about these people. So if you're watching this for the first time, is there no red flags showing up? Because obviously I know how many red, I'm seeing like a thousand red flags, but it's only because I know how things have ended up. But does anyone, does anyone who hasn't, who doesn't know the Lord, does anyone see red flags who does not know the Lord? I'm curious. Oh, I'm curious. Bye, Matthew. Um, kind of reminds me of my family, to be honest, and gives me narcissistic vibes in a non-therapy way. Yeah. Like, it gives me like, huh. You know what I mean? Trisha is high narcissist, which makes sense, right? Scored extremely high in the narcissism scale. I wonder if Trisha and Moses is, not that they have NPD, but high on narcissism. I wonder if it creates like a symbiotic relationship since they're constantly fueling each other with um, positivity, which by the way, might not be unethical or immoral, but they might also have to alienate themselves in order to create it. Because if they have anyone with a differing opinion, it might it might be too much in a positive or negative way. Like Ethan might actually be inappropriately involving himself in their relationship or appropriately involving himself in the relationship, right? Which could be why it pops the symbiotic relationship of like their narrative towards each other. So whether it's po like whether it's real or not, that's the problem is I always watch these things and I'm trying to figure out is there a healthiness or a vindictiveness to it? And I usually look for forthcomingness. When there's secrets, when people are keeping secrets or when people are hiding their partners from people or when people are saying things like, oh, she's not that important to me, but then he's seen everywhere with her. 
Or when people say like, oh my God, I love her so much. Like we got married and I'm like, oh, let me congratulate her. And then you won't let me talk to her. I'm like, what's going on? So that's what I'm looking for. Are Moses and Trisha being forthcoming? Are they genuinely happy? Are they sharing that? Or are they keeping it secret so only they know the truth? And in that case, what's the truth they're hiding? The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Ari says, I know very little about the situation. Only that Moses is Ela's sister and they had a falling out. Okay. Okay. I, I'm curious always on the experience people have with information like this because that is very interesting. Like all of it's interesting to me, right? I I don't know what's happening yet, but I will say again, I, I secretiveness, a lack of forthcomingness, all of that is a red flag to me. Not that you don't deserve privacy, but see, privacy is different than hiding. Hiding things and keeping secrets is different than being private. Listen, I love your brother. But, I love Moses. Yeah, He's a great I mean, guy. He's done a lot for us. I don't know. I don't, I'm just going to bite my tongue, I guess. I have a lot to say. I'm not going to. <laughs> but he has his own channel. And if this is helping him also like reach new audience, then I'm happy for him. That's channel cool. Water. That's the name yep. of his channel. Hmm. <laughs> this is our third time back together. <laughs> well, not that we're together. We're not apart. We're not apart. And what's today's date? August 1st. Oh, August 1st, you're not DMing anybody. <laughs> Me neither. I'm not on Bumble anymore. The most impressive thing I think I've seen you do so far is... <laughs> Do you think that they orchestrated their relationship? I think they're very social media focused as a couple. I think they're, like I said, I think they follow the trends. I think they're very social media apt and aware. They're very good at making headlines. Like their marriage, their kids, they make like gossip magazines. Like they are D-list celebrities. And do you think that they orchestrated this whole thing so we would watch it? So we would watch content about it? Like, do you think they got together and were like, hey, let's slowly reveal our relationship. Let's slowly build on it. Let's slowly do this thing. Let's create drama. Let's, ooh, let's do this. And they needed Elon, Ethan out, like in, like a part of the drama, but also they didn't want to keep them in the inn. Do you know what I'm saying? Something about that, you know? Bryson said he hid their relationship harder than I hid mine and I'm gay. I get the vibe he felt shame about it, but it might be projecting. Mm, I wonder. What? I don't know how to share this story without saying like the full context, but you literally scaled a fence that could not be climbed. It was like a vertical fence, like one of those vertical ones like that. And all of a sudden it's so tall. All of a sudden I see like scale it like you're a freaking Spider-Man. So he literally went over because like basically his keys got like on the other side of the fence and he like jump over it. Funny way to say it. Okay, well, you know. You know, I have one of those keys to just throw themselves. <laughs> it's a game we play. No. Yeah. It's the game. <laughs> You're gonna stop playing. Who would win in a fight, you or me? Um, you, because I won't hit you. Aww. Okay, well, but you'll win the fight, but I'll win the war. September. He said he broke up with you because you started like punching him. He's shaking his head no. Oh, okay. Y you said I could say everything. I did not. Oh, oh, this is when they accused Trisha of hitting Moses, right? <clears throat> oh, punch him. You said that's why you broke up with me because I punched you? Okay. And he's frail. Who would win in a fight, you or me? Um, you because... It, I took it like a man, didn't hit her back, a woman, didn't get angry or upset, and moved on, so it won't ever happen again. What the fuck? What is going on? Because I won't hit you. This is so much weirder. Play, I forgot a lot of the... I forgot this. Like, I... I knew I was there when it was happening. I was watching it with you guys, like live. We are all obsessed with frenemies. But wait, this is so weird. But I did not punch him. Frail. It wasn't. Can I? Okay. If you want to, you are fine. If you're gonna fucking, if you're leaving this, and I'm gonna have to say the full fucking story because what happened was what? is I had physically like hit Moses in the arm out of a rage and a fight um, really early on in relationship. Actually, we weren't even dating yet. 
we were like upstairs and I took his phone. I saw like other DMs to girls. Actually, we weren't even dating yet. He like tackled, not tackled me, but like we went to the floor and so then I like punched back, but I never punched him. I was like, hey, you piece of shit. Like I wasn't like that. I had physically like hit Moses in the arm out of a rage and a fight. You guys had a like, tussle? He had a Oh wow, did you show them a bruise? No, I don't want to ever show it to anyone. Hey, just asking. Bruises, so of course he's like, oh my God, like, look. Well, then I took his keys, and so he's trying to get the keys back. You literally scaled a fence that could not be climbed. It was like a vertical fence. What did I see, like, scale it like you're a freaking Spider-Man. So he literally went over because, like, basically his keys got, like. I can't tell. <clears throat> we had this happen in the drama with Mr. Girl and Destiny and me where Max was trying to like share the story about domestic abuse and Steven was kind of understanding where he was coming from and I was trying to relate and I was like I mean sometimes you get angry and you hit like we siblings and I rough house all the time we don't we've never really hit each other like to cause violence but you know you rough house with siblings I've only ever pushed a partner back once and that was after I safe worded and they like ignored my safe word and kept pressing me down into the ground because they were afraid I was going to hurt myself, but I ended up causing more of an issue. So, okay, that was like really understandable. It happens. But like, is that what's happening? Like we're hearing a story where she was angry and hit him in the way where like if he had her in the same way, it would be within reason, like tapping somebody like, oh my God, stop. Or is it like, I'm going to punch you and this is domestic violence and we're ignoring it because it's a woman. Like, because there is a difference. Like, a lot of people are very physical. You know what I mean? Because, like, okay, but is she literally telling – or is she sensationalizing it for views? Like, I can't tell what's happening because they get married and have two kids. A uh, Spoiler. So, like, they – this is happening, but then they're going to get married and have two kids. So now I'm even more confused. Is this fake? Are they saying it for social media? Do they think it's, like, sensational? Like, is Moses lying to his family and lying to Trisha? And he's actually been lying to everybody and everyone's really confused. And then there's a narrative being built off the lies. And the only reason I say this is that even though Trisha is a liar and she lies to this day, love her, peace and papa bless. I love her so much, but she lies all the fucking time. Is Moses, all, like, lots of people lie out here. Nobody cares. Everyone keeps interviewing Trisha. Nobody cares that she's a liar, right? Is Moses that kind of liar? You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out, like, what am I watching here? Am I trying to relate it to, like, oh, kind of like a, you know, you're just, like, roughhousing. You're like, oh, my God, stop. Or is it, like, a, I'm going to domestic violence hit you. You know what I mean? Like, what? On the other side of the fence, and you can, like, jump over it. Let me wait to say it. Okay, well, you know. You know, I have one of those keys to just... Wait, she left a bruise? Is it a real bruise? Like, did she really leave a bruise? Because that means she hit him hard. Like, she hit him for real, real. Right? Like, can you just leave a... But then if she left a bruise, is that for... I've never, like, obviously, like, bruises is crazy. You know what I mean? In, like, a fight situation. Like, that escalated. But also, like, you you know, guys fight all the time and they're still friends. Like, I fight with siblings. We're still friends. But when when a couple does it, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like when you fight with your boys and you get in a fight and then you're still friends after or like you fight with your siblings and your friends because you're not actually trying to hurt each other. You're just angry and don't know how to communicate. When something, when couples do it, it like is different. I don't know why. Actually, I got to think about that. Why is it different? I think because couples in my mind get the special place of like never needing to result to violence. You know what I mean? Oh, there are pictures Moses took of the bruises he gave her. Oh, he gave her. No, she gave him. Okay, she gave him. I never know. Why is it weird when couples fight? Is it because I really do put like romantic relationships in the hierarchy of like prior, same with kids. But then we hit our, people hit their kids, bro. People discipline their children. But not to the point of bruises, but then you never know how a kid's gonna, this is so complicated. What kind of a hit is this? What are we talking about? Is this domestic, domestic violence? You guys know that TikTok? Domestic violence? Is this domestic violence? Bro, I don't like couples hitting each other, bro. It's a fucking red flag. Bro, themselves. <laughs> it's a game we play. No. Yeah. And also, we weren't dating, so I don't know why he said we, he broke up with me. Coming out an abusive relationship is no joke. I couldn't imagine mentally and emotionally. That's what Moses say says. Coming out of an emotional relationship is abusive. Oh, I'm so fucking confused. Because of that, we weren't No, he, he said he called it off after it got... After... The tussle, I guess. It wasn't abuse. Oh my god! It wasn't like I punched him and like you. Look, I, I, I had physically like hit Moses in the arm out of a rage. Okay, this was also my question because now that I'm excusing it, but I'm explaining something about mental health and about cultural differences. Lots of people 
feel like physical expression of emotions from neurodivergence to neurotypicals to cultural backgrounds to mental health, use physical communication negative and dysfunctionally and positively and optimistically. And knowing the difference is very, 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 very nuanced. You never actually want to fight a sibling and mean them ill intent. You never want to fight anybody and actually want to hurt them. That's when you know it's bad. But sometimes like a child with like nonverbal autism that sometimes uses anger or like physicality to express themselves, you know, their intention is not to hurt you. So that's different. You know, sometimes with mental health, um, Trisha has borderline, maybe she's expressing herself in a physical way that to her feels very like not a big deal, but to somebody else might feel like a big deal, okay? Or we're dealing with a domestic abuse situation in which both adults understand it was domestic abuse in private maybe, but still got married and had two kids together, which lots of couples do. Lots of couples consent to marrying and building a life with people that have abused them. So I'm not sure what we're what we're witnessing right now. Oh my God, so I totally forgot about the hit. I did. I totally forgot about the hit. My boyfriend got catfished by someone, said something about an altercation we had that nobody knew. Ethan brought it up on the podcast that makes me look like I'm a domestic abuse, like I'm a, I'm a person that hits my partner. This is so much funnier with them dressed as each other. Damn. Damn, that is so, this was a great episode. I'm not going to play. This was a great episode. But yeah, I can see why Trisha's upset. Because I do think a lot of people, but then again, what is abuse? See, this is my problem. I call everyone toxic. This is obviously toxic and dysfunctional. And I would say calling yourself an abuser has two, two spectrums. Everyone in the world thinks they're not an abuser. Everyone in the world thinks they're not dysfunctional. Everyone in the world thinks they're not the toxic ones. We are all dysfunctional and abusive and all these things at some time in our life in some spectrum. And I don't think you need to be blacklisted because you've been abusive, depending on the spectrum, because I think I've seen it from everybody. I feel like I've seen so many people in what I would call abusive, uh, abusive situations, but they would never say that about themselves, right? And so again, is that like, I don't want to blackball you, bro, or blacklist you, but I just I want to let you know like what you're doing is not okay. But also if you think it's okay, you should date people that think it's okay, but also it's not okay. And so there's so much that goes into this. You know what I mean? Where I'm not sure what we're witnessing. Are we genuinely seeing a couple? Because they get married and have kids. I'm not saying it excuses it. I'm saying are they allowed to excuse it? If you have a girl who sees a guy who chronically cheats on all his partners and then he's in a relationship and you try to hit on him knowing he's bound to cheat and then you feel like you won the prize and he ends up with you. Are you really a victim in that circumstance if he cheats on you? Because to some extent, like not really, but also yes, you're like a victim of your own choosing. So like Trisha and Moses being together, I think is and always has felt toxic to me because it feels like they're okay with the toxicity which means they're sort of mutually abusing, but also they're okay with it. So my brain doesn't really have a lot of sympathy or empathy for that. Because again, it feels like a self-inflicted wound, but then I feel really bad about it as a person. Like as a, like a, 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 a consciousness, I feel like, man, that's so sad, bro. Like that bums me out, bro. I do. I get bummed out when I see toxic relationships because I'm like, bro, there's so much love in the world. You know, and even recently, Trish has been talking about how she knows she's not supposed to say her partner saved her, but she really feels like Moses saved her. Mm, my heart. Okay. Discord says they're allowed. They both moved on, seem to have gotten better. That's true. You're allowed to grow with your partners. Your partners are allowed to grow and get better. Okay. Not once an abuser, not always an abuser. Sure. You know. And like that was uh, out in the open, and we even said Moses, like, stop, cut it. We're like, don't put that in the thing. What does he do? He puts it in the fucking thing. Wait, it was never, pri it was never fucking public. Well, maybe you shouldn't hit him, bruh, bro. Oh my god. Oh, hello. He doesn't even like cats. Dead. Dad. But you're not a dad. Or you're a dad now. I am. I have four kittens. Oh, you post on your Instagram story. That's the only text message I get from your kittens of your video video of your kittens. Yo, I don't even like corn dogs and I kinda want that corn dog. I don't even like hot dogs. I think they're gross, but I want that outside bread part of the corn dog. 
Specifically, Ela texted him about something and said, is this true? She's making Moses get rid of his cats. And you're like, oh my God, is this true? I can hate on people that like kittens. I don't get kittens. It's another reason why we're so opposite. I was like, what the fuck? Moses is 42. He doesn't even like cats. They're so cute. I mean, Moses Have doesn't want his cats. Moses? So he'll keep them at the museum and not the house. Thank you. I'm allergic to cats, but... Then why do you have five of them? Well, there was a stray cat. Oh, the audio is so loud. <laughs> and then she suddenly showed up pregnant. We saw a comment that said, Trisha's making Moses get rid of his cat. <laughs> do you think I have that power? What do you think I control? She wanted my cats dead. Hold on. Moses texts, she didn't care about anything that had to do with me. I'm not insecure like her. She wanted my cats dead. What the fuck? Why? What? Saw a comment that said Trisha's making Moses get rid She's of. She's so jealous of them. Oh my gosh! Stop. This cat. <laughs> Do you think I have that power? What do you That's think I That's crazy. <sighs> I laughed at stop that. Dang! If you had to go home and feed them, <clears throat> I'd be yes alone. <clears throat> It was in the video she deleted. People were so critical of her and her jealousy of my cats. That's why. That's crazy, babe. Like, what? I can't with her. But I think the key is to not care about what's in each other's DMs. No, because he was always like, I talk to no girls. I never talk to girls that way. All of a sudden, fuck you. Want to cuddle <laughs> you? This could be you, this little fucking kitten in my arms. Be you, this little fucking kitten in my arms. I could hate on people that like kittens. I don't get kittens. It's another reason why we're so opposite. Yo, the fuck? Now, if I meet a hate... <laughs> I was not ready. That was like a jump scare. Oh my God. Remember Trisha went on there? Didn't Trisha go on a reality TV show to be like, I'm addicted to tans or something? Hateful person. She just lies so much to get on TV. I love that about her. And my response to them is with hate. I just mirror them. I'm just another hateful person in the equation. And that's what hate does. Hate is like a disease. It just finds its way into another person's soul and another person. And there's no escape from that. So the really important part is when you meet a hateful person, you don't want to love the hate that's in them. What is she doing? <clears throat> this looks a little, what is she doing? Them. You don't want to embody the hate that's in them. You don't want to encourage the hate that's in them. When you show love, you are talking to the love that is in them. And it might work and it might not work. Either way, you came out of that situation and equation intact with your grace. Do you think Moses hates that she made him cut his hair? Now he looks like a fat dad. I mean, I love that. He has a dad bod and everything. But like, to be for fair, I think they've both, both gotten bigger, which is normal in a relationship. You know, you're in love. You get a little fatter. My husband and I also got a little fatter. You know, it was Christmas recently. We overate. You know, we're working on it, though. <laughs> Grace and your love rather than taking on their spirit, taking on their hate. And now you're not different from them. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, that wasn't Jason? Wait, that was Jason. That is Jason. No, that is Jason. This is... Wait, am I fucking stupid? That is Jason. And it might Wait, work. Amy says I thought that was Jason. It and is it Jason. it might not work. Either way, you came out of that situation. And it is Jason. Isn't Jason Jewish? Or no, is he not Jewish? No, Jason's Jewish. She likes Jews. That's like her whole thing. Equation intact with your grace. Yeah, she was with Jason. That's the Jason she was with. She was the, with the Dober crew. And your love <clears throat> rather than taking on their spirit, taking on their hate. And now you're not different from them. What? <sighs> oh my God. Crazy this is awful. Life. This is why I should have done it, the podcast. Because honestly, it's just the first episode. <laughs> Remember, Trisha's career was also going down the tube at this time. 
and frenemies really helped put her back on the map. Ethan was looking for a new, uh, remind me if I'm wrong, guys. Ethan was looking for like a new shit, like a new thing. He really wanted to do frenemies. It ended up being a huge fucking success. It put Trisha back on the map. It gave Trisha credibility again. Ethan really can rise a career from the grave. Ethan has this ability, because I don't know what how, why Ethan has so much power, <clears throat> except he's so lovable. He's got a great, he's a great, great show and everything, great stream. So he rose Trisha's career from the grave again. And then the frenemies thing made people take sides and people really fell for Trisha. Even, uh, guys, just remember, just like a reminder, okay, <clears throat> that like Trisha was being canceled left and right for so many problematic things she was doing. And now she's like really well liked. But the thing is, they've, a lot of people have made e Moses the enemy now, which is really interesting. Hmm. Well, good thing I'm not going to share anymore. We're both not sharing any more personal details with you. Yes, he will. Nope. Yep. So that's what I'm worried Boyfriend's about Moses different. is that she's got a Rolodex <laughs> of all this shit on you. I love this. Oh my God. I'm not the content, the costumes. <laughs> When's the last time you were drunk at 2 a.m.? Never. Never. I'm, I'm actually never. Oh my drunk. god, this audio. Yeah. You've never been drunk. No. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. He only teases me when he's drunk. I think only because you were drunk did I learn those words. College. Never. We should do a drunk one when you're drunk next time. You are so. Um, are these different times though? Did he get drunk with her for the first time? Funny. They're and out. Someone found him on Hinge. Wait, isn't this much younger Moses and Trisha and this is much older Moses and Trisha? This is literally when they started talking and this is like four months later, right? Or whatever. So maybe between this and this, he looks like he started drinking. Look at him. So like this is like they look young and fresh. And then here they obviously have been together for a while, but not together at this point. Right. So like maybe he had a drink for the first time with her. Never been drunk. No. Oh my god, this audio. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never been drunk. drunk. I think only because you were drunk. Okay, so because you were drunk. Drunk did I learn those words? Okay, so like either they're lying or this is in the timeline of when he f to first took his first drink. College. Never. Mm -hmm. never. We should do a drunk one when you're drunk next time. You are so funny. Someone found him on Hinge that night. Someone found him on Hinge, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Let me see your DMs," and he logged me out that night. And then, and then when shit goes wrong, she's gonna try to ruin shit your fucking life. Wrong. Oh, really? <laughs> should we bring up? Should we bring up the text messages? But, but wait, 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 no, fight. no, no, no. Ruin shit your fucking life. Shit has gone wrong, and I don't expose stuff I know. Like he's doing all these texts. Oh, here's my boob shot. That's what he texted a girl. This, he was. This is what he sent her. But this is what she does. She's all day on those messages. <laughs> she obsessed with those messages. Like. Well, like, yes, she did. No, I didn't. How about these ones? I'm gonna cry, bro. This is kind of sad. This is just kind of sad, bro. I don't know if it's just because it's like 2, 11 a.m., but bro, this is sad. Man, I really feel for people who are just like in toxicity and dysfunction. Damn. I like you, everything about you. Hold I'm on, gonna kiss every inch of your body. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You don't need to humiliate. You don't need to humiliate. Why? He did it to me. Well, you did accuse him of fucking kind of flirting with underage girls. No, that wasn't it. That was not. We well, that was kind of this. fucked up. No, we. And you a text saying that I go with underage girls. That was no, not inappropriate true. age girls, yes, not underage. No, no, oh you my said god. Underage. He read it. Wild. Here, you said he talks to underage. I also think Trisha lies. So Trisha probably said a bunch of things about Moses that just wasn't true. And also says, I'm, I think Moses probably lies. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm sure she lied. I'm sure. Uh, no offense. Trisha seems like the kind of. Whoa. <laughs> you know, I got a message the other day that said, Brittany, you say the inside thoughts out loud. <laughs> I was about to get canceled. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Age girls. No. And right there. He talks to underage girls. Where? Where? I, I literally don't see. Right it. there. He talks to underage girls. 
confirmed that it says that. Was. Yes, I can and go back he, to that if you want to go back. And then he read it here. But I think, but I think it's out to the world. You said, read this part. He said, it says, this is he different. talks to underage girls. You said, he stalks to underage girls. I don't expect a response. And again, I've, uh, I don't want to talk to you again, but he's just a fraud and he's scary. You said, he talked so much trash about me and made fun of my body and then used me. He's scary and vile, needs help. Yes. Truly thought he liked me, but he played me. He always was bitter. You said he's a psychopath. I have 24 hour security now. That's what I'm worried Boyfriend's about Moses different. is that she's got a Rolodex of all this shit on you. Yeah. Ethan, she Wait, slept with 10 guys Wait, while let, we were in that let, break. Let, that I Talk. Moses, stop, stop. Wow. Okay, first of all, she's allowed to sleep with 20 guys when they're on that break. As long as it's a break for real, real. Oh. <gasps> Wick, thank you for the raid, Wick. Hello, everybody. You're well. You're coming in to a lot of drama. Hello, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh. Just stop. All right. Hi, love you. All right, Trisha. Hi. Hello, everyone. I have so much hate in me still, like hate for him, and it sucks because I don't want to be that way. Not necessarily hate, but like maybe resentment. Yeah. That's the same. Ugh. Most swears that I hate him. I mean, the way I see it is that if you really love someone, you can forgive them. And if you forgive them, you forget. I forgive him, but I can't no, forget you it. Can't forget it, so you're not. No. Moses is well, feeling like you can either love everyone or hate everyone. There's no in between. I'm like that's no, not true. I, I hate certain people. I just. I mean, I'm paranoid of everything for sure. I think Moses is trying to murder poison me. I think Moses is trying to murder poison me. Trisha, people with borderline disorders tend to be very attracted to sociopaths. And sociopaths to them. Huh? That's. It would I believe it. I wonder if it's because the sociopath knows how to manipulate them and has no qualms doing it. Maybe, and and the borderline sort of believes it. I don't think I've ever had a more perfect, nice person in my life where it's almost like he's too fucking perfect and nice where I feel like this is not real. I'm like, what are you hiding? Oh, Moses is here. Just give it time. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> First of all, antisocial personality disorder displays differently in all people, and low empathy does not obviously mean guaranteed maliciousness lots of people with alleged empathy do a lot of bad things the world isn't full of sociopaths but a lot of the world is more than happy to hurt each other so i would say that instead of being worried you're with a sociopath you should just be worried you're with a person who doesn't have values or has values that differ from yours who might be willing to hurt you you know i think sometimes we worry about being with a sociopath you should just be worried you're with a person and then hold faith that that person you've chosen is a good choice because you made that decision. Like my husband and I, in so many ways, we chose each other because we trust our judgment in choosing people. After many years of, you guys know, I chose wrong. And I learned those lessons in life. And I listened to the tools that were given to me. And I picked them up and put them in my little arsenal. So, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Woo, girly. Because I'm I'm a very minimalist person. Like I, my joy in life is thinking. That's yeah. it. Like, give me the space to think about stuff, and I'm happy. Okay. So okay. you guys have been That's dating. Mm -hmm. You guys are now living together. I mean, what the fuck? Is aren't you guys moving a little fast? Well, he has his museum still. He has a museum, so he like goes works there. But yeah, every night. You guys sleep together. You guys are together every night, and he's moved shit into your apartment. I mean, he has like five shirts, so <laughs> yes, but all five shirts are at my yeah, house. Yeah, five shirts. <laughs> but now he has. And now you too, guys are. So we wait. can like buy a house together, like a big fancy one, because he has like money. So <laughs> it's the first person I have like ever dated that has like money, and it's the first person I have like. Okay, I kind of liked this. I thought this was a really wonderful point that this was the first time she dated a guy with money, and I was like, oh, good, that's nice. Because, like, not that he needs to have money, but for Trisha, that was a way people took control of her. Or, sorry, I mean, used her for her money. Ever dated that had, like, money and good credit. Good credit. Yeah, he lives in the hood. He literally lives in the most ghetto place. Like, it's literally, like, dangerous to go where you live. I went once, and I didn't know any better because it was dark, so <laughs> I didn't know where we were. No, but it's safe. It's My place is safe. Amber says, I don't know, man. He sparkles with love when he talks about Malibu. He does seem very happy to be a father. 
Though the narcissists I know who have kids also sparkle when they have children or talk about them because it's like their next project. So, I don't know. No. You literally had a break in there. Moses, can I just say, I was totally, when I first met him, I totally judged him. I'm like, oh my God, you live in like a shitty water museum. He like, owns like, it, though. Right, but he, he had this baller. little, but he had no other space. He like lived there. So I was like, okay, why are you like living there? But then I was like, ew, you like, he didn't even have like a real shower. It was like a porta potty shower. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it was kind of. Mm, interesting. So is he a rich guy who lives frugally? Or is he a guy who pretends he has money to bring the right woman in to be a cash cow? On ghetto. And then I was like judging him with him in this like little tiny makeshift apartment in like this like building in like the ghetto. Because you know people yeah. are like he's using Trish for money. Could you imagine if I had like no offense, but if it was like one carrot for me because I have a big fat finger, it would have looked like crazy. I would have to have bought my own. Marriage would not work if he gave you a one carrot dime. I'll tell you right now. Be like he's broke. Fuck him. Yeah. I know. I feel so bad. What do you feel bad about? It was his renovation money for his building. Ah, whatever. He doesn't care. He's got a brand new house. That's fuck, true. fuck his old building. Look at him. He's so happy. Look at that smile on his face. I don't have health insurance. I don't want people to like speculate. Just you don't have health insurance. Well, Moses, what? you're buying nine carat diamond rings no, and you don't have health insurance. I mean, what the fuck are you doing with do your life? I'm young I'm and healthy. Sorry. I know he. Had... He's never had it. We're having all these cars together, so I'm like, we should probably get insurance, like driver's insurance, all on all the cars of everybody. I'm gonna probably maybe like get like a McLaren or something for him. A McLaren? Bro. That's some sugar daddy shit right there. Are you patented? Um, no, because when you patent, oh. it's just a matter of putting the money into it. But no. Okay. <laughs> mm, not patented. Uh, mm. It was always a financial thing of like, do I want to invest that much money into the patent? That's why I think Moses hangs on. He knows I'm going to die at like 38. He's like, oh, then I'll get the house. I think he has a patent now, doesn't he? Am I wrong? Didn't he say in the latest interview we watched that he does have a patent now? I don't know. The money. You think he's a gold digger? That, I guess that's a compliment to you. You're like a boy toy dad if I'm like paying you to be here. You can't afford me. <laughs> you think? I know. Oh, wait. I know. I think my dad has that car. I don't think so, though. I think it was just. I don't. No. Wait, I don't know anything about cars. That kind of looks like my dad's car, but I don't think that's my dad's car. What's a Mojave? I don't know anything about cars. It kind of looks like it, but I don't think that's his car. That doesn't look right. That's the Jeep Gladiator? Yeah, I think he has a Gladiator. Gal, Gal, Gaddy, Gaddy. I think, I don't know. He has a car. My dad, Lowe's, I love Jeeps. He bought a Jeep. And he bought a Jeep. It, decked out jeep truck whatever and he was like when i die you can have this because i know you love jeeps i was like okay first of all thank you also you're not gonna die for another 20 years so and i now i live in i now i live in croatia he has a jeep that looks similar to that i don't know i don't know exactly but it's like a gladiator thing i think i don't think about cars i just know it's cute as fuck okay it's all decked out made for off-roading we've been off-roading in it a lot What do you guys think? Is he using her for money? I don't know. Since the beginning of this pandemic, 400,000 small businesses have closed. Okay. Today, I'm announcing additional changes to the PPP program. PPP. The last month. That's... That must have been clipped. That has got to have been a very clipped Biden moment. That's We've increased the share of funding for small businesses with fewer than 10 employees by nearly 60%. We officially, it's done, signed. We signed last night. We bought a house. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? You guys did that? Yeah, we got it last night. Well, congratulations. <laughs> But holy shit. But holy shit. Yeah. So you guys are... <laughs> you guys bought the house you were telling Both, me about? Yeah, and our names are on it. Do you want to... Oh, my God. Are you? Oh, my... I would love to look at their financials. I love finance. Oh, they should go on Caleb Hammer. <gasps> what if Trisha went on Caleb Hammer? 
I can't believe you guys got that house. It's I mean, insane. congratulations. Thank you. Like you level. guys split the fifty percent. Fifty percent. He put just as much. Way to go, me. Moses. Right. I'm so proud of him. Like I told him. Did you need a him. loan for the down payment? Totally Did you need a him. loan for the down payment? No. Oh my goodness, we both have the Moses. Good I job. No. Oh my goodness, we both have the Moses. Good I job. Know. You guys better save your money. You got a house now. One, Damn, one you're gonna be fucking. Up. Ari says, "Is it possible to love someone and use them for money?" Is it possible to love someone and use them? Yes. I think it is possible to hurt the people you love. I think it is possible to take advantage of the people you love. I think it is possible to take advantage of yourself. I think it is possible to abuse yourself and others, whether you love them or not. I think love is a very specific emotion, connection, and chemistry that can occur and it doesn't mean you won't hurt people. I think this narrative of like you wouldn't hurt people you love is a beautiful sentiment that I don't think is true. And I think that's why it confuses people with difference and um, sometimes just like pride, like they're really going through something, bro, which is why you have to have boundaries with people. And it's okay to also have space from people and take them out of your life in a permanent way, even if you love them. I love people so deeply, bro. I still got hella strong boundaries. And with peace and love, I love you so much. I will never block your number. I will never not answer your call. But that doesn't mean you can just come over. That doesn't mean you are entitled to my time. It doesn't mean you're entitled to my, like, health. You know, I love you, but, like, boundaries. Because they don't have a very good relationship with themselves. It sometimes deters us from having a better relationship but like it doesn't change how I love them you know they hurt me doesn't change how I love them you know I love them anyways doesn't mean I can't have boundaries you know so yeah I've been hurt by people that I love and I they love me. I know they love me I think they just don't know how to not be in their own pain and so because hurt people hurt people they keep hurting people you know but I'm not that mad at a dog who's afraid who bites you know I'm just not but I know I know there's a reason to be upset because it's upsetting I'm broke Moses you better be careful buying her ass all these diamonds what was this like 10 million dollars I mean I've never seen a diamond like that in my life <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy it's, but like that's ridiculous that's <laughs> okay literally so cute but also okay Thank you. I was just, oh my God, we were watching Love is Blind and I hate all of their engagement rings, no judgment. And I was talking to my partner about how much like I love our rings and we have the same rings, which is like, I love that. Like we, I love that. We picked out our rings together. We both went like half and half. So we like bought our rings and gave them to each other. We picked, I loved everything about us picking out our rings. It was like so nice. But it says so much about um, our personalities. But then we asked each other, do we want like a really extravagant ring? And the truth is, is like, I don't think our life mixes well with very extravagant jewelry. Um, but I'm not opposed to it one day, but I don't think I'll ever wear it because like I don't like things on my fingers. I actually never liked wearing things on my fingers because they're so like obnoxiously big and they catch on things and I'm like too klutzy. But I like the way they look like I used to buy rings all the time and never wear them because they were pretty, but they would annoy me. So this I'm just so happy with my rings because they work for my brain. They don't ever catch on anything. I never feel like I'm ruining them. I feel like they're really sturdy. They're white gold. They're just like, I don't know. They're just like really great. But I love when someone finds a ring that like says something like they love it. I've never known what it meant to fall in love with a ring until I fell in love with my rings. I just never got it because I always like didn't like rings. And then I realized like, oh, I get it. Like, I, I get it. She looks so happy. <laughs> like, what, how many carrots is that? Wait, yes. Alex, Goblin, Goblin Energy, collect the pretties. To be honest with you guys, I suffer from this very, it's not even a joke. I want to buy all of the glitter from the stores. I want to buy all of the face shine. I want to cover my body. I want to buy every rock I see, every crystal. Not because I like crystals, but because I like the way they look. I want to buy every, every time I see something on TikTok that's like slightly shiny, I'm like, I want that. I 
It's so bad. I'm trying so hard not to be a hoarder because I would just hoard everything shiny. I would just like be such a little, such a little schmiegel, such a little, such a little, mm. oh my God. How can you, how can you? Who are you? Why are you buying nine carat <laughs> rings? I mean, what? Seriously. <laughs> it's a real again. diamond or is it like a sarconium whatever? Did it's it a real again? diamond or is it like a sarconium whatever? Nine carats, bro. Did you I, know this? Guys, help me. How much is nine carats? Hold on. I have to Google because I don't even know what that means. This motherfucker could buy a nine carat diamond ring. He had plans like renovate his building. He had plans like renovate his building. And Not like, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry that you took your renovation <clears throat> Holy money. Holy shit. But you know what it says to me? It says he's invested in our relationship. He put half for the house. He invested in this ring for me. And you get a mortgage <laughs> on your uh, on your place? It's a blood diamond? <laughs> Probably. The watchdogs are back. And we're going to go after the criminals who stole billions of relief money meant for small businesses. Is she about to expose that it's a fake ring? I'm so confused. Business and millions of Americans. Tonight I'm announcing that the Justice Department will soon name a chief prosecutor for pandemic fraud. <laughs> what? It's just like a, it really is the title of the show in front of me. It's just a very awkward vibe because we're not like friends. So it's very like, okay, thanks. Bye. See you next week. I don't know. Yeah. I'm worried about the day you'll get, get along too much. <laughs> I guess a nine carat ring can go from anywhere from 20,000 to 40,000. Okay. I guess that's cool, bro. Interesting. I'm so confused. I keep looking up the rings and everything about Trisha's ring says like, oh, it's fake. It's blah, blah, blah. I don't think it's fake, but I don't know. It just says, are they implying they bought the house using PPP loans, PPE loans? Oh, maybe. Oh, is that what they're suggesting? Oh. Oh, what a good time. Oh, what a good time Frenemies was. Oh, it was so good. Oh. Yeah, I'm worried about the day. Is that why they run the podcast in the house? Get, get along too much. Aww. Well, I, I, I hope that... Um, Should we be friends in real life? I've always <laughs> considered our jousting as as friendly okay and uh i've i've always figured you probably think of i mean especially recently yeah when you make a video and i make a video then you, <laughs> it's fun and yeah. i was and i always get excited when you respond i'm like yeah baby <laughs> another podcast but now now we're friends and now yeah, i like so, you and now you're just a cool person <laughs> i want to be friends Oh, I'm so excited. Let's not have a contestant. Let's just meet. No, no, no. He's got to come through this. Yeah, show. what? I wonder if that's why they make... I'm not suggesting anything. But if the video is saying that they bought the house on a business loan, I wonder if they're saying that's why they do all the content. Because they do turn their whole life into content. So technically, I wonder if they're getting around... I wonder if that's why they have to make their whole life content. I wonder if there's a way to get around it as YouTubers like a content house. I wonder if they can constitute their house as a content house. And so they have to work and make everything content. Does that kind of make sense? Hi. Well, my friends, here we are. They said it would never happen. Me and Trisha making a podcast. You know, I just wanted to say before we get started. Oh, yeah. That I am so grateful to you. You're so funny and amazing. Thank you for doing the show. And I think you are so funny and talented and you make the show so great. My bro. Remind me, wasn't she getting paid like up to $30,000 a month to do this show with them or something like that? I don't remember. What was it? Or she wanted 30000 Does anyone remember the lore? I can't remember how much it was. Mother-in-law and Trisha are engaged is a great way to start the year. I love you both and I'm just very happy and excited for the future that you guys hold. So Aww. happy birthday, Trisha. Thank we love you. you. <laughs> I'm always willing to make it work and there's nothing you can say or do 
or storm out or whatever it is that, that's going to make me abandon you. Oh! Okay. And I can tell you're so, you hate me so much right now, but I don't hate you. Well, I know. I like I'm, you still. Mm. My feelings didn't change for you. Well. You're not quitting this fucking show. You're still going to let me on if, I break, if me and Moses break up? It was 45, 50%. Mm, 45, 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do I care? Oh. Shit. I mean, I'm glad you guys have given me, me multiple chances. The one blow, I remember you texted me right after. It was really bad. And I remember being like, oh my God, why is he texting me? Because I thought we would never talk again like that last one of the well, last blows. Oh, I remember reviewing this. Oh, my heart. Oh, the 5%. The 5% for the crew. I remember. I remember now. Damn. So much lore I forgot. We had, and oh, I was really? like, oh, I really messed it up this time. And then you're like, I hope you're okay. And I was like, oh my God. Like I was so, I, I was like, but I want to socialize. I like to, I want you guys a part of, I want to be a part of the family. I want you guys a part of, like, I want everyone to be together. I always felt like we had a good chemistry. I think probably. For sure. I liked you guys. I was like, this is a good, like, in, truly, like when I first started dating, like Moses, I thought it would be like a good idea. Cause I was like, oh, then I can get close to you guys. I, f I would have done this without if Moses was involved, I feel like. Why, like from the beginning, I wanted to come to like your house and be a part of your lives and since then, she has become my sister-in-law, soon to be, my partner in crime, and one of my best friends. Uh, you, Bye. I think that would be a perfect story arc where you just leave my ass behind. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I feel like you're going to leave my ass behind. I'm not going anywhere. I guarantee you that. I got no fucking ambition. You're my only best friend right now, so I'm one of yours. You're my only. <laughs> this is everything. I would never expect it to work, but I just feel like we have really good chemistry. I love it. I yeah. think I snuck into this world somehow. Well, remember when we I snuck it through the back. I was like, here I The back go. door uh, through Moses. Moses is the back door. <laughs> <laughs> We're all good. I don't want to separate Moses from his family. I apologize. Like, I want him to be with his family. If you're quitting, I got to do. I gotta buy you guys a therapist or something. I got to make sure you guys get married because I don't want this to stop. Oh no, wait, before sh before they get into the creepy music. Oh my heart. Man, I really, bro. This is my new Guts and Griffith. This is my new Guts and Griffith. Oh. oh. Yeah, I'm worried about the day you'll get, get along too much. What? That's what destroys us, basically, is the existence of our parents in our head, their voice in our mind. Well, only if you have toxic parents. I mean, yeah, like the bad part of your parents in your brain, for sure. But what about the good parts of your parents, like the wisdomous parts? Who's your favorite family member? Okay. Talk right now, I'm eating. <laughs> I think Moses has a real trouble with commitment, though, because he's not really been in any long-term relationships since I've known him, which mm -hmm. has been a long time now. He's just a very uh, independent person. Mm -hmm. And I do think he likes to spite <laughs> his family, which may explain you guys. Oh, I can see that for sure, yeah. You're, start, you're trying to steer stuff up. No, never. Great drama. Mm -hmm. I, just kidding. Drama. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I think Moses <laughs> likes to... He likes to spite his, he's, he's often, his whole life has kind of been the pursuit of spiting and distancing himself from his family. I'll take it. I love it. You said I remind you of your dad and your mom, which is neither good things. Yeah. <laughs> the worst of both worlds. He's very like that. Like anytime we've had a quarrel or beef, he's like. Yeah, I do. I do think it's a red flag when people have bad relationships with their parents um to an extent if the other siblings don't so i do think it's slightly a red flag i think it depends this is very specific okay nobody get triggered yes you can be the only sibling who recognizes your parents are toxic and need to leave yes your parents can get along with other siblings and not you yes so many caveats yes but sometimes a bigger red flag is when you're the only sibling who doesn't get along with parents or you have a very toxic relationship with your parents because it might be you. And so that's the question. I think it's a really fair question to ask. It's something I didn't think about until I learned that lesson the hard way when dating. And it's something I look for now in my relationships where I want them to be civil with their parents. 
I want them to be loving enough to understand their parents are people too on a journey and that, you know, everyone goes through ups and downs. But unless your parents are super, super abusive, like to the worst degree, why aren't we getting along with our parents? And maybe that's because I'm a family girl and I believe in building bridges, especially with people you love. And I want to build a bridge. I understand boundaries. I think that's so valid. Like my in-laws were over today. That makes it's so much better to marry into a family where you get extra family. You get in-laws and cousins. And I've met his uncle and aunt. I've met his, you know, I've, I get a whole family. If I was moving to Croatia and there was just me and him, we would do it. But it's so much better knowing I have a whole family here. I know his family. I know multiple generations. I get, I get a whole family now that I've moved here. And his parents have been together. My parents are together. He gets my family. I get his family. Like we are giving each other an opportunity to be bigger, not isolated. So I'm not saying it's not okay to not talk to your parents. Your parents might be very, very bad people. You might have very shitty parents. But considering that Ela has a good relationship with her parents and Ethan has a good relationship with her parents and other people have a good relationship with her parents – it feels less likely that her parents are truly abusive and more likely that him being the oldest, and this happens with oldest kids, got the brunt of being their the parents, got the hardest part of the parenting, got the least understanding, right? So um, there could be something like that where Moses genuinely felt traumatized, probably should have gone to therapy for it, maybe he has, and maybe he wanted nothing to do with his parents, which is fair. But is it a fair reason he wanted nothing to do with his parents? Or does he demonize and think of them as evil people when they're not? Because whether or not that's true is really dependent on his sanity. It is insane to paint your parents as evil people when they aren't evil. It is within reason to recognize the evil of your parents if they've been evil to you. It is within reason to say my parents have been really bad people and I hope they get better but I want nothing to do with them. It's another thing, you know, to paint your parents as horrible people and then you know, your partner finds out they're like the sweetest people in the world with maybe some issues, but like basically the nicest people. Then it's like, okay, my partner's the crazy one. So that's the thing. Because I've definitely dated people who like painted their parents in a really negative light. I'm like, oh my God, your parents are horrible. Fuck them. Then I meet the parents and I'm like, oh no, my partner's the fucked up one. And that was a huge eye-opening experience for me personally. And I was like, oh my God. Like I never, because you think like the fruit doesn't fall further from the tree or farthest from the tree. But truthfully, sometimes your kids just are so different than the people that raised them. I've absolutely seen that happen. Um, Fishy says, I do think that's a quote privilege in having parents you can have a reasonable relationship with. You know what? Maybe I grew up in a bubble where most people had relationships with their parents. So for me, it was considered the norm. It's very abnormal where I'm from to not have a relationship with your parents. So when I do meet people who don't have it, I'm always like, okay, what was your dysfunction then? So true, everyone, like every one of my friends has pretty good relationships with their parents or loved their parents for the most part or had some sort of like decent relationship. They still see their parents. They help them out in medical emergencies. So I'm not sure if it's really a privilege to have parents that you get along with or if it's just certain bubbles and cultures have better relationships with their parents than others. I kind of just assume that certain people, like certain groups of certain categories of humans on the planet tend to bond with their offspring and parents better than others. And I mostly think that starts with the parents for the most part. But then you have anomalies where like someone's, someone's just like crazy. And so they can't observe their parents correctly. You know, so that's the question. Which one are we dealing with? I'm on your side. I'm like, thank you. How do you feel dressed as your sister? I feel like she's dressed as me. You showed up in like a IDF uniform. <laughs> And a beret. M Moses thought I looked cute, by the way. He said I looked very good. She said it was called. fucking mine. Would have to be awkward like my sister. Mm -mm -mm. He got way more awkward than your sister. What? Moses posted a picture on Instagram to his stories, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. of, of him and you in lingerie. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Fishy says luck, perhaps, rather than privilege. I mean, so many people still live with their parents. Are you guys just living with parents you don't get along with? Bro, that's crazy. You're crazy. You're literally insane. If you live, if you're over the age of 20, 
and you're living with parents you don't even get along with, you're crazy. You better be there for a reason. You better be fucking paralyzed. Because like my brain is like, if the statistics are showing people are living back at home with their parents, you must be getting along with them. Because that's crazy, bro. Like, but then at the same time, like, maybe you're just as dysfunctional as your parents anyways. Or maybe, I don't know, that's crazy. But yeah, maybe, maybe. But I think it should be the norm. Lennon said that should be the norm. I definitely think it should be the norm that you get along with your parents. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely think that should be the norm. And I definitely think when you don't, it is like a tragedy in a way. But don't get me wrong. I don't like want to live with my parents, but I get along with my parents. But we also worked very hard to get along. And all of my parents' kids, you know, except for the one one, he struggles. But everyone else, we fucking know our parents' problems and we love them because they're not that fucking bad. Like at the end of the day, okay, like everyone's got their problems. Um, but if you don't want to talk to people, you don't have to talk to people. Like if you don't want to talk to people, you don't have to talk to people. But I think it should be the norm that parents and kids have a symbiotic relationship and we should strive for that, you know? You know? Case is crazy of you to assume people are making logical decisions or choices based on their joy rather than survival. Good point. That that's a good point. Like living at home with their parents, you mean? Yeah, I I was never that category of human. I basically would always rather survive with roommates or living outside the house than be at home. But I get it. Some people survive better at home. I just couldn't do it. So I'm not in that category, but I get it. Yeah. Hmm. Alex says, I remember that specific brain blast moment I had when I realized my mom was just a person doing her best to human along with everyone else, bro. So true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, says, my grandpa said, don't think you and your baby can stay here. That sucks, bro. Yeah. That sucks. Ari says, sometimes living with toxic parents better than homelessness or rather than homelessness. Yeah. For sure. Like how... And I guess, well, he, Moses hasn't, Moses, I don't know if they know what you do for a living or. Think, yeah, they have. Found yeah. Out. And so, <laughs> and, and I don't think that Moses and frankly, Moses has done a terrible job of explaining his relationship as he always does. As a kid, I used to take white t-shirts and draw on them. Wow. Mom, so she's coming for your brand. She's stealing and your then, ideas. I mean, he did it to, to me and Ela, he didn't explain. Is he literally saying Ela copied him? Ela made Teddy Fresh. Don't you come for her, bitch. I swear, if Moses tries to take credit for Teddy Fresh, I'll slap him metaphorically. Explain anything, and we're close with him. I don't know what he has to hide from us, because we're not judgmental. <laughs> I don't think you guys are close as you think, but continue. Like, I don't think there's a closeness. Though. Okay, go ahead and try to drive a wedge between me and my brother-in-law, you freak. <laughs> you guys are not close. <laughs> I mean, we have a level of familiarity. We talk to Ela's brother, like, all the time. He's over our house like every weekend. We're not working on like the house and stuff, but not like, hey, like how's it going? Okay, like, whatever. I'm not yeah. even gonna argue the closeness of my the, my relationship with you. You guys are not close. You're like not even fam. So annoying. Why do you keep saying that? He Ethan genuinely is confused. Ethan is so genuinely confused. You know what I mean? Like he's genuinely like, why are you doing that? Because I think Moses is playing both of them. Moses is playing good at home and with Ethan and Hila. And he's telling Trisha that they actually have a toxic relationship. Like, I've seen this shit happen in families, bros. I've seen this shit go down in families. It's like, what are you doing? You have the one person who's spreading rumors and telling everyone different stories. And everyone thinks, like, you're all getting along. And then Trisha thinks she's in the know because of what he tells her. This is why he gives me narky vibes. I'm telling you. I've seen people fucking do this shit. We're like, mm -hmm. Tell me, he's only that close to you guys. I don't think maybe like, you need to fix that, not me. Well, he's the not like Moses is an emotionally close to his family, but to them, he displays everything that would be closeness. But to him, he's like harboring these feelings about them. That's the impression I get. <clears throat> Dang it. He's saying you're lying. You said that. When I said, Did you tell him? He goes, We don't talk like that. I was like, All right. Oh, no, that's not what you said, Moses. Oh my God, see, I hate this. That's not what he said, but that's why, whatever. No, I swear. Oh my God, this is so annoying. But he's literally just, he literally said that. I wouldn't make that up. That's such a random thing to make up. But he, you know that, you know he's not close. He leaves all the time. He doesn't stick around. Like he's not here to stay. He comes and pieces out. Okay. Don't worry. She's not going to drive a wedge between us. Moses is giving us the kibosh. See, and then it triggers Trisha's borderline because she feels like she knows something. And then it's like a whole thing. 
I'm telling you, I think Moses is a, he reminds me so much of the narky behavior of somebody I know. Literally this like very similar vibes where they play nice. They act like they love you. They like do everything like accordingly. And then they like secretly drive wedges between everyone, spread rumors, tell lies, confuse people, pick a vulnerable partner that they can like, who's who's like self. Okay. The narc I know, I think, who's just like this, kind of picked a self-sufficient partner who's educated and like runs their own life. But then, so that way they picked a partner that wasn't easily manipulated, but like anyone can be manipulated. Nice try, bitch. But, and then like causes a wedge between their family and their family. And so there's like this whole thing where there's like rumors and problems. And it's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Obviously mental illness, right? Like it happens, but it sucks because like the person they married is like so convinced they're telling the truth that they've even alienated everybody. They've like convinced themselves that they need to 100% only trust this person and no one else and everyone else is the enemy. And I'm like, bro, no one person could be the truth bringer. This is what a cult is, but also not. It's like mental health, right? It's like codependency. I worry about Trisha being codependent on Moses. And she has been bringing it up now twice in two podcasts with Leo Skeppy and with Moses saying like, I know you're not supposed to like let your partner like save you, but I feel like you saved me. And I'm like, and again, I don't know. They seem much better off now. Maybe we should watch some current stuff of them now to see the differences. I don't know. Maybe they're perfectly healthy. Maybe they went to therapy. Maybe they actually get along great. Maybe everything's great. They just like that kind of stuff does remind me of that where I'm like, why are you doing that? Why are you putting a wedge between people, bro? Like, why are you like? That's why I don't like people who lie or don't like be forthcoming. Clear the air. It is better to be a person who clears the air than a person that like hides things for, quote, people's safety. Like, I'd rather just clear the air. Fuck it. I'm not embarrassed. Nothing we do is interesting. Everything we've done, other people have done. Just clear the air. What is going on? You know, because like we need to know. He's your fucking family. Like we should talk about it. If Moses and Ela have, have a problem, problem with Moses too. I it's don't have a problem with Moses. Problem it's not about you. Me. It's about it's between Ela and her brother. Like I just had an argument with my brother. I'm not ready to talk about it right now online. My relationship it's a with family Moses, issue. It's a family issue. Okay. It's between Moses and Ela. Yeah. Okay. Cool. She said something like about them getting married and she said something like, oh, his, mo his mom is not even invited. Yeah. And that really pissed me off. And I told you, you got to cut that. Like, and not his mom either. Clearly, it's, like, it's, and if it's not a joke, it's not a joke. You missed it, whatever. But it's like uh, that said it was one it's, time it's, you guys cut it out and you never addressed why you cut it out. And here I'm saying it here. I'm not hiding anything. That's what happened that for me, that crossed <laughs> the line. And I got upset at my brother, not at her. And Moses doesn't like you, and you guys don't like him, and that's cool. I'm See, that's happy the, that you can't. That's stupid. But it's true. It's so well, true. Well, that's fucked up. Why is Trisha saying these things that she says you told him, and then you're denying it, but she's saying it's Her. true, and she yeah. keeps saying it and saying it and saying it, and then you're always saying, "Oh, she's just saying it for the show." It's like, well, that's fucking not true. No one told me anything. Moses didn't tell me. You didn't tell. Me. How was I supposed to know? It was an offhanded joke. Moses that should I have made. told you because Ela kept talking to him about how. But he's such Be a honest. Liar. Who's better, my family or your family? <laughs> Is when he like lies about it. He told that girl that he was DMing that, oh no, I don't do it. Her sister films her. My sister's never filmed me. Like, yes, we did fans, but you never filmed. You saw it in the DMs. Well. He said that my sister did it. And I was like, don't say that. Like putting it in me. I'm like, my sister's uh Going on another call soon. She said that to get the heat off of her sister because people say that her sister, that it is her sister from before he ever met T. Okay, got to this part. His hand was the hand putting the dildo in my OnlyFans. What? His hand was the hand putting the dildo in my OnlyFans. Saw it in the DMs. Well. He said that my sister did it. And I was like, don't say that. What? Who? Are they saying that? Are they saying that Trisha, the, what? My brain is going to explode. Going on another call soon. She said that to get the heat off her sister. Like putting, was it me? I'm like, my sister doesn't. Uh, because, sis, because that, because people say that it's her sister from before I even met T. My brain is blown. I'm going to fucking have an aneurysm. So they're saying that there's a scene with Trisha on OF in which she's saying it's Moses's hand 
but it's actually her sister's hand. But then that. Yeah, that, that. So I was like, okay, just own up. And she feels bad about doing that to her sister. What is happening? What? Do it that you do it. Like, don't put it on my sister. We even talked about it at dinner. We all had together her saying, just take it, the blame sure. to me. So, this is. Trip was this is Trisha's sister. Actually planned. I remember this happening, but I didn't know, I didn't understand the context, I think, at the time, because I remember seeing this video. Um, for my sister's birthday, it was me, my mom, and Moses. And Moses, he then incidentally invited himself to our family surprise. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm sorry. It's not funny. But it's a little funny. Ethan is so funny. I'm sorry. And we paid for him. Ethan and Ela did not pay for their VIP ticket. To do okay, I remember this. Like, what are you guys all poor? You're all buying $11 million homes. Why is everyone even acting like they're poor? Who cares who paid for what? Jesus, your families are so selfish. My family would never talk about money this way. Like, just pay for people. Unless you were literally broke. Why the fuck aren't you paying for each other? I don't know what's wrong with people, bro. I would, you know how many times I've taken my siblings to Disneyland, bro? And I get it. We're not even rich. Just pay for your fucking siblings. But, like, also, I don't understand. Like, they're all millionaires. Just ask them to Venmo you. What the fuck is this? Rich people are so fucking, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You all live in $10 million mansions. What the fuck? You can't afford a VIP to Disneyland? I don't even understand this conversation. Disneyland. Which is crazy because he takes that 5%. That's Trisha's sister made a TikTok what? saying that we didn't pay for Disneyland for her birthday. Okay. I begged Moses. I begged Moses. Begged him to let us pay. I it's don't have a mo problem with Moses. Problem. I don't. I sense it. Wait, Moses doesn't even have to tell me. He doesn't say anything, but I just know. Because okay, you're so, so you're psychic. I 100% believe Ethan, and I 100% believe Moses made this. I'm telling you, this is the narky behavior. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They do this thing where, and look, you got to just move on. People are sick, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Some people are fucking sick. Move on. Just like, okay, boundaries. But, like, you know, you don't have to hate Moses. I don't fucking hate anybody. It's, you know, it's a thing. You have to learn how to not to hate anybody. It takes a lot. But, like, you just got to move the fuck on. Some people will be crazy, okay? I remember this Disneyland mess. And I remember thinking there's no way Ethan didn't offer to pay and would have paid. There's no way Ethan would have taken advantage of people. Look, Ethan might take Abba and Preach in bad faith. And he might fucking misunderstand people because of his bubble. But Ethan is not going to fucking lie about something like this i just don't think ethan is a literal liar i don't think he's an intentional liar but i have no reason to think moses wouldn't be because he married a liar like god bless i love trisha so much this is P papa bless i would love to be on the pod girl but listen to me when i say this okay lots of lying in one couple and not lots of lying in the other couple okay i know people lie but some people are more like like lying than you know more you know what i mean more people lie than others Amy says, Ethan seems incapable of creating a whole other storyline. Bro, Ethan doesn't, he's too fucking Ethan. He's too dumb in the nicest way possible. I really, I just think he's like not even thinking about it. He's just like, you know what I mean? I just, you know what I mean? I love them so much. This is just so inappropriate. Like in so many ways, there's no way Ethan didn't offer to pay. I refuse to believe this. And I refuse to believe that Moses knew and like, I didn't like, he created the rift. Why would the sister say that? Why would the sister open her big fat mouth about this? Right? Like, why would she say that? Don't say that on the internet. But also, you're all millionaires. What are you complaining? Trisha's a millionaire. What are we even talking about? What are we even talking about? From the beginning, from the beginning of our relationship, you're just like, wow, I'm just so disappointed. This is Moses' fault. This is Moses' thing. Like, like literally what did he didn't do? say that about anything. You I'm telling you, poor Trisha, bro. She's being fucking. This is playing Trisha and us mm -hmm. in some weird. Mm -hmm. What's what's he trying to get mm -hmm. at? I hate it. I hate it. I'm frustrated for Ela. I'm telling you. Siblings, bro. Siblings are so dramatic. Let me tell you. I love them. I love you all. I love you all, my siblings. You're all so fucking dramatic. Everything about There's always it. one person who's a f little fucked up more than the rest of you, you know? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't like know. As a host, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Moses, let me ask you. What about her appearances on her show made you want to date her? 
do you understand, Moses, that the girl you're apparently dating has sent me, personally me, tweeted at me pictures of her vagina? Do you understand what I... you're doing? Okay, you just, she's meant, she was at the mentally ill height of her life, okay? I think that's a problem. Do you, un do you even understand? She, the girl that you're apparently <laughs> dating, which you think is funny, wanted to have a thruple with your sister right. and your brother-in-law. She was single at the time. She's allowed to send nudes to whoever she wants. Do you understand what you're that's doing? That's a problem if I ever saw one. She had double Moses at one point. Just saying. I'm just upset. The this I don't like. To work out. This I don't like. Mm. I don't like it. Mm. I what disavow is the nature this. nature of this relationship? Well, I disavow it. And you know, he said he was just going to get involved as a goof. But now all of a sudden, there's no goof and he's just fucking her every day. <laughs> I don't need that shit in my life, bro. Just Who ruined it? Was it Trisha or Moses? I personally blame Moses. I think, I think Moses is putting her up to it, too. I think they think it's funny. He literally What did I say about? What did I say about? He, you I do, too. I do think that moses originally got involved to like fuck with everybody and then trisha fell in love with him for realsies and had a thing for him and then he went along with it in some way you know amy says didn't trisha want to role play as Ela with moses stop it stop trisha's wild you literally said that you're so pissed and it's moses's do you know what why do you always bring up family drama can't you just move on and talk you're about the one something who, else like, bring it up i was just because you're it it's just because like no Whatever, it's what? fine. You can talk about it. Go ahead, no, get no, it out no, in the I'm open. <laughs> he told me he invented the photography that takes pictures of water. He told me that too. Do you think it's real? Yes, I'm the only Not one. anywhere else. <laughs> or, I mean, I, I don't think he invented the concept of photographing water, but I... No, no, I did. He's I the did. only one that's Oh, you're it. the... Oh, well, well, I mean, I'm not a historian. What do I know? That's a big claim to say you invented <laughs> Yeah, it's a big water. invention too. Big claim. To say you invented <laughs> yeah, water. Yeah, it's a big invention. When he claimed that in his documentary, even, I mean, who can verify that, right? Like, he won't share how he does it with anybody. But, like, I would love a verification, obviously. I'm sure someone could verify it. Yeah. I have, have a, a problem. problem with Moses, too. Sometimes I worry about Moses because he's just <laughs> got this, he's so obsessed with water. I sense it. Wait, Moses didn't even have to tell me. He doesn't say anything, but I just know. This is the monster that built H3H3 and yeah. the man who gave us this camera, yeah. the man who made it all possible. Yeah, Holy Moses. So. Nice. Holy Moses is Ela's brother. Well, listen, I love your brother. But, I love Moses. Yeah, he's a I great mean, guy. He's done a lot for us. I don't know. I don't, I'm just going to bite my tongue, I guess. I have a lot to say. I'm not See, they obviously don't know, guys. And, e and, and Moses is the one not sharing. So the Moses is the one who can't be trusted. Like, they obviously don't know. They're so obviously not lying. They're just, like, so fucking confused. To this day, they're so f Ethan is so fucking confused. But obviously, he knows it's something between Ethan and Ela. Or, no, sorry, Ela and Moses. You know, and then the person who's withholding information is the person that I'm confused about. <laughs> but he has his own channel, and um, if this is look at the way they shouted him out and everything. Uh, helping him also like reach, you know, new audience. Then I'm happy for him because Channel cool. Water. That's the name yep. of his channel. Channel Water. Mm -hmm. I'm over it. Last podcast, they mentioned my channel for the first time since they started on YouTube. This is what it took to make them do it. Cloud chasing whore. But don't you think that's manipulative? I didn't mean on my part. Like this was a get back so you can get attention on your channel. Oh, mm. Moses, your shit sucks. Moses, your shit sucks. Even with all this publicity, bro, your shit sucks, bro. Nobody wants to fucking watch you, Jared Leto Jr., Okay, your shit sucks. Okay, you're Jared Loto Jr. Go back to photography and shut your fucking mouth. Okay, nobody wants to fucking watch you. Bro, I have a bigger channel than you. Shut the fuck up, right? Do I? Oh my God, I just said that out loud. Is that true? Make sure you guys check for me. Thank you. Let's check. I was filming. Eat this your morning, sandwich. So. Oh, okay. Channel water plug. Go find his video. What's it about? You have yeah, those? Wait, I can't even find it now. So don't what? act like, oh, you have some special connection with Moses. Like, I know more than you do about everything. What? Like, I know everything about everything. I know more about Moses than anybody. Like, I know more about your family than anybody. Wait, I'm so confused. Does Moses not have a YouTube channel anymore? Wait. Is this his channel? Wait, Moses is... Wait, there's a Moses Hackman channel with only 2,000 subscribers? No, this can't be it. 
Wait, what? What's happening? Is Moses even like, what's happening? Here's Moses's water channel. Even his wife promoted it. Nah, he's still stuck at 24 subscribers. Bro, my channel's bigger than yours, bro. Bro, my channel's literally bigger than yours. Even your wife couldn't help your channel grow. Shit, bro. Do you ever think that maybe you just suck? Damn, bro. Maybe you just suck, bro. Buddy, I know more about his my family, family than every. Yeah, I know about I don't know anything. It's a shame you weren't here when my family trashed me just for the fact that I was dating Trisha. Please go back and watch all the videos they made about me without my consent. Oh my god, you're so dramatic, bro. I'm telling you he's a narc. I'm telling you he's a fucking narc. Just something. He's a victim. He's a victim. Everything in his bit. No matter how successful he'll be, he'll never feel good enough about it. To them, I was fair game because I dated someone they looked down on. Think, well, okay. That's what happens to most people. Their parents turn them into hateful, judgmental people. That's when that happens. And then we carry it through the rest of our life. And then we are attracted to what we hate and we become that. And more than that, then we actually marry somebody that is exactly what we hate because we're attracted to it. You said I remind you of your dad and your mom, which is neither good things. Yeah. It's <laughs> the worst. I mean, I definitely think we continue cycles. That's just like basic psychology, right? Like we, we tend to date things we're familiar with because it feels safe to us. And we date those cycles. And then if you want to break the cycle, it's just Moses thinking he's like better than everyone else. You know what I mean? You missed a few messages. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to read them all. Should I go back? Were they even worth reading? I didn't mean to read them all. Should I go back and read them? Hold on. Wait, I can't fucking see. This glass is in my way. Hold on. Where was I? Okay, wait. Hold on. Were they good? Let me see. Yeah, I remember I talked to you about that and you mentioned they're protective of you, but I didn't see this protective in a way. Not that you're entitled to ride their coattails, but still it'd be nice of them to shout you out. I never asked for anything. I supported them blindly since they are family. They didn't, which is okay. Oh my God, he's so fucking annoying. It feels like he sets people up. He's like, here, Ethan and Hila, be YouTubers so I can be a YouTuber. Exactly, you gave them their first camera. It was more than that. Um... They saw their reflection. Trisha was so supportive of my channel and they realized they haven't been. So they started now. Send me texts that they like my new video and such. First time. I ignored it and didn't think about it. Now that it happened, I realized how crazy it would be. God, you're so needy, bro. My whole family doesn't even watch my shit, bro. A couple of my siblings watch my shit. Mostly my sister. But like, okay, relax. Your family doesn't have to like your fucking hobby or like your job. I don't know about you guys, but my family, I prefer them they, that they didn't come to my work with me. You know, Ludwig said something really sweet in a video where he's like, if you're a streamer, send all your videos to your family. If you can't get your family to watch, no one's going to watch you. Bro, that is like such a sweet narrative from a guy who makes PG content. But I'm not going to send my fucking parents my videos, okay? They're totally different people. What is video? What's it about? Yeah, I remember they talked about you. Okay. You have yeah, both? <laughs> So don't act like, oh, who are the messages to? I think they're to Trisha or somebody, some girl. I'm not sure. Discord said Megan dropped, uh, Megan, oh my God. Discord says Brittany dropped a truth bomb about um, family dis um, dysfunction. Oh my gosh. I think, um, I think that Moses gives me like a uh, first child vibes. Something about first kids, bro. I warned my, um, farm brother about this i was like yo watch your first kid bro he's getting a lot of attention and i love him too but don't put too much stress on him because he's the firstborn and also like just you know firstborn kids got problems okay they just got this like they got the brunt of the parents parenting they got a lot of ego associated with being the firstborn especially firstborn sons they just got a lot of fucking problems and then on top of that i think that moses has a sense of I'm the first, I'm the first, I'm the first, I'm the first. And I'm like, okay. Like, you know, I don't know. He wants credit, but he also wants to be humble. And it's like, make a decision. Oh, you have some special connection with Moses. Like, I know more than you do about everything. Like, I know everything about everything. I know more. No, they were worried about how it will make them look. You're ruining your own life to prove a point. Marrying a crazy person just to spite your family. It's sad and embarrassing. I mean, I do think... I do think that 
I think it started off that way and then they just became like really symbiotic together in some ways for their codependency. Legion says, did they bring up the allegations of Moses stealthing women? No, I didn't see that. I think because there wasn't enough evidence for everybody to feel comfortable sharing it probably. More about Moses than anybody. Like I know more about your family than anybody. I know more about. This is another lie Ethan put out to hurt me. I never dated some someone despite my family ever. My family, not Ethan's, love Trisha and are so happy for me. Okay, so which is it? Are they happy you're dating Trisha or not happy? You are so manipulated by his words that it is scary. Hold on. He just said that their fam his family never supported him for dating Trisha. Then he's saying his family supported him for dating Trisha. Oh, my family, not Ethan's. Love Trisha, not Ethan's family? What? His my family, family. That every Yeah, I know about I don't know anything. It's a shame you weren't here when my family trashed me for just the fact that I was dating Trisha. Please go back and watch all the videos they made about me. Yeah, he's fucking gaslighting the fuck out of everybody. Okay, this is how I initially felt about Moses, but then I felt bad because if you watch their current videos, they seem happy, but also Trisha's been sending me... I swear to God, Trisha Paytas, if you watch my fucking content, and I swear you do sometimes, because sometimes the way she talks, I'm like, huh. And I know she like... um. One time I got an alert on my channel saying like someone's trying to take down my video and it was about Trisha and it was from like a company associated with Trisha that I was told back in the day like this was her company taking down videos about her. So I feel like she knows my shit and I feel like when she talks like oh there are people who say like you should make your partner everything or like they shouldn't save you or da 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 da. Sometimes I swear to God I don't think that's universal to my content. But sometimes the way she talks, and even you guys will send me messages being like, I think Trisha watches your video. She said something you said the other day. And I was like, I don't know. But if you're watching this girl, listen to me. If you're happy and in your joy, none of us on the internet matter. I don't matter. No, all of us are stupid. If you are truly happy with this man, and you see, if he is treating you correctly, and you are genuinely in your joy, ignore all of us. We're just losers on the internet who don't know you. But if in any way, shape, or form, you are ready to go to that next step of healing and you really want to have a better relationship with yourself, it is also okay to like look at all of your choices and to, to just ask yourself, is this my joy? And I'm not saying to divorce Moses, girl. You guys seem happy now. But it's also okay to not want your partner to save you. And it's also okay to find healing outside of that. Because I know you're still dealing with eating disorder stuff. I know you're still dealing with financial stuff. From, your, from my understanding of your podcast, I could be wrong. And it feels weird to be in that situation. If you're in a healthy relationship, that should be moving you forward. You know what I mean? I just feel like, why are we still dealing with money problems? Why are we still dealing with eating problems when we're rich and in a position of privilege where we have access to those things? And if we have a partner who's encouraging us to get better, but also things take time. It takes time to like do appointments and all that stuff. So I get that as well. So I'm just saying like, it, maybe we don't know anything. We're all dumb on the internet. And all of us are making horrible assumptions about their relationship. Or maybe like it's okay to remind people that, you know, if they feel like something is wrong, maybe something is wrong. But maybe if something, you know, feels wrong, just go to therapy and make sure it's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Okay, so repeat That's what it. happens to most people. Their parents turn them into hateful, judgmental people. That's where that happens. And then we carry it through the rest of our life. And then we are attracted to what we hate and we become that. And more than that, then we actually marry somebody that is exactly what we hate because we're attracted to it. You said I remind you of your dad and your mom, which is neither good things. Yeah. <laughs> the worst of both worlds. So don't let that happen to you. Don't let hate come into your heart and turn you into the thing that you hate. So watch, watch out for yourself because you're falling into a trap. You're falling into a place that you think you're doing something good, but actually hate is the one leading you. Hate is the one that's making you do those actions and you don't see it. You think, I'm the good guy here. I'm doing something good. Damn, that ending though. Okay, great video. I'll link it again in the chat. What do you guys think? Honestly, again, we don't know these humans. They're on a journey. Everyone's on a journey. Damn, that ending though. 
it was interesting. The editing was interesting. I will say I'm not sure. Yeah, obviously I wish them the best. Now let's go to Trisha Petas. Trisha Petis. Trisha Modus divorce new tea. Stop it right now. <gasps> Trisha. There's no way. No, I don't believe him. I don't watch T channels for a reason. I don't watch I don't watch T channels for a reason because they be lying out here. They be lying. Let's check out her YouTube channel. Okay, so here's Valentine's Day, Moses and Trisha together. Happy Valentine's Day. Just to get a vibe we're check. We're celebrating by going to God, I really wish we were sponsored by Raising King. They sponsor so Yo, I want donuts. Oh, I got lemon squares in the fridge. So many people. And here we are just eating it for free. Yeah. Encouraging Trish podcast. Come to the desk. Just a reminder that Trisha is pregnant with her second baby. Congrats. Trish podcast. I mean, if they sponsor BFS, I feel like they could sponsor us. Dave Portnoy has more controversy than me. Maybe equal amount of controversy. Anyways. We also do mukbangs. <laughs> we do mukbangs all the time. I'm just Trish. Well, they did let us work there or let me work there one day. So that was nice. Last Super Bowl. Almost a year ago, actually. Oh, yeah. We got Raising Canes. Yeah, we're going to go get Krispy Kreme and Valentine Donuts after this. So... I'm very excited. Happy Valentine's Day. This is like, we haven't had fast food in a while. It's no, kind of felt like the I haven't vibe. had this since we went like south. Like when. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever had Raising Cane's. Alex says they're mid. I don't think I've ever had them. But I do want to, is there like, I do want a chicken strip, bro. I want a chicken nugget, bro. Like two years ago. There's our Valentine's Day meal. So if you're a lot of Valentine's Day, you got us. Your favorite mom and dad. Yes. Maybe do the thumbnail already? No, we're going to do the donuts. <laughs> oh, this is not a thumbnail. But you can pose for one if you want. But our relationship has changed so much since then. I think about that. Oh Except my God, that, what a perfect skip through. I skipped right to when they're talking about their relationship. What bothered me or annoyed me back then. Actually, like, love or find endearing now or just doesn't bother me. Like, your TikToks, I love most. Yeah, Ela's pregnant too. Ela and Trisha are pregnant at the same time. Those are the TikToks now. And I remember back in the day, I'd get so annoyed if he wanted to show me a TikTok. I'm like, ew, ick, stop. <laughs> but now I love him. And I'm like, why don't you make more? Even on your little cap cuts. And so I think it's just so cute. So I don't know if your TikToks got better or I just fell in love with you more. I don't think I can try uh, Kane's guys. I don't think they have that in Croatia. Do they have that in Croatia? <laughs> <laughs> You used to make some weird ones. You always did those weird filters. I hate it. Like the race car the driving. <laughs> I hated those. <laughs> There's just things that I find funny. Mm -hmm. For no good reason. But. Is there chicken in my ear? Yeah. This is a little crumb. Thank you. Okay. What, were I, what was you laughing at the other day? What was you? What were you laughing at the other day on TikTok? And I was like. <laughs> can we see? Ethan I don't Slater. even know. Huh? <laughs> Ethan Slater smirk. Um. Hey, it's people. Up. How do they feel? What's their energy feel like to you guys? They're okay. Thanks. Girl dinner. Girl Ooh, dinner. The best part. Mm. Okay. Okay. Oop, copyright. You're just like me. Copyright. See how they do all the trends together? Like they're very into like doing all the trends, which is like fine. Like they're good at their jobs, like three million, three million, three. They get good views. Like she needed somebody who was gonna do stuff with her, you know? Like she needed somebody who was gonna like engage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Two kinds of people that eat ribs. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amy says he got the YouTube fame he wanted. Yeah, and I think she got the family she wanted to stream with. You know, I, I kind of feel like they either both settled for somebody that could give them their dream. She got a family and he got fame and, and a family. He obviously wanted one. Or they're just codependent right now. But with therapy, they could be honestly like truly healthy. Because guys, I do think it's really strange to not have a relationship with like have, like other parts of your family if you're healthy. But also like even good people don't get along. So I could see it being okay for like two good people not to vibe as much. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know what's happening truly in their relationship. 
I can't tell, but just the way Trisha has been talking lately about her mental health, about the fact that she still binges and has problems with food, the fact that she's worried that like maybe she's doing it wrong because she wants to like what's next, you know, I don't know. That stuff, I you know, stood out to me personally. Everyone's on a journey. It takes, you know, lots of time to move through life in a way. It takes a lot of time to move through your trauma and dysfunction. And healing is a slow journey. And also it might take her a long time to come to a consensus about that journey. I just want to encourage them to look for their joy, both of them, right? Both Moses and Trisha. So... All right. Great video. I'm glad we watched it. Val just came in at the end here. Girl, you're still streaming. Not anymore. This is it, girls. Wishing both Trisha and Moses the best. Wishing you the best. And um, go to therapy. You know? In my head, in real life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine. Yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind. Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun,